Gentlemen, it's Joshua here with the Joshua Scott Experience, and I'm going to be going over three reasons why you should declutter your home, as well as giving you three ways you can get started right now. Let's get into it. All right, so reason number one, it reduces stress and anxiety. We all know that stress is a real part of our everyday lives. Stress is a huge killer. Stress reduces your lifespan. Stress contributes to gray hairs. I don't know if you can see that I've got several gray hairs right now, and I'm only 30 years old. I've got a lot of gray hairs, especially up in my beard. I've got a lot of gray hairs on the side of my head. Stress contributes to premature grayness. We don't want that. I mean, unless you're going for that matured silver look, that's all well and good. I'm not silvering. I'm just going straight up salt and pepper gray. Stress and anxiety kiss them goodbye they're out the door when you declutter you don't have a lot of stuff it feels like you're suffocating number one decluttering helps reduce stress and anxiety reason number two why you should declutter your home it improves focus and concentration I work from home and I know there have been several times when I've been working that I keep thinking to myself, man, I gotta get that cleaned up. Man, I gotta do something about this area over here. I gotta do something about the clothes that are on my dresser. I've gotta do something about the pile of clothes in my closet. I've gotta do something about the toys all over the living room. Yes, I have two kids and I love them to pieces, but their toys are everywhere. Decluttering your house helps your concentration and your focus because you don't have to worry about all the things around you that you need to clean up, you need to clear out, you need to find a place for. By cleaning out your house, you clean out your mind and it allows you to improve your productivity at home, at work, and in your community. That's reason number two. Reason number three why you should declutter right now is because you won't believe what you will find when you go through and you start decluttering your house. You'll find all sorts of hidden gems and lost treasures that you thought were gone forever, either in a move or in the trash. Whatever the reason is that you think that you've lost this item forever, maybe you've been looking for it for weeks. You've been looking for this specific item for a week. That, that pin that you got as a graduation present, you thought it was lost, you thought somebody stole it. You could find it if you decluttered your house. Decluttering your house does not guarantee that you will find a stolen pin but you won't believe the kind of things that you will find when you declutter your house. There are a lot of lost treasures out there just waiting to be discovered. All you have to do is just get the mess out and uncover them. One little lost treasure that I came across recently was actually this little wooden turtle. For those of you that don't know, I am a prior service Marine and I remember one time we went to Senegal and I actually got this wooden turtle from one of the vendors there, from one of the craftsmen, and I'd been looking for it forever. It got packed away and piled up in a ton of boxes out in our garage. A lot of those boxes were my old military uniforms and things that I'd collected over the years. And in that, in unpacking and in organizing and decluttering, I actually found this. I got rid of a lot of unnecessary things from my time in the military, but the uniforms, the dress blues and all that, I actually found a way to stow that. And we'll get into the how-tos of decluttering here in a minute. But I just thought it was really interesting because I thought I'd lost this little guy. I mean, he's, he's small, he's tiny, he's easy to lose. So decluttering is gonna help you find things that you thought were lost or at least find things that you're still looking for. All right, now the reason everybody came to this video in the first place, how do you get started decluttering your home? Well, the first thing you've gotta do is you've gotta have a goal in mind and now I'm not talking about a general vague goal of I just want less stuff I want there to be more space in my home those are benefits from it those are definitely benefits from decluttering because you're getting rid of items that you don't need anymore they don't serve any purpose and maybe they don't hold as much sentimental value as you thought they once had those are some of the benefits but you need a goal in mind one of those goals being hey this week I'm going to clean out the living room Next week, I'm going to declutter the dining room. The week after that, I'm going to declutter my bedroom. After that, I'm gonna declutter the kids' rooms, then the bathroom, then the garage. You have to have a goal in mind. Know where you're going to start and what you want to end up doing. 
What do you want the finished product to look like? When you're decluttering, you have to have a goal in mind. Otherwise, it's gonna be a lot harder to get rid of things. And you're just going to stay stuck in a cluttered state of being. So have a goal in mind. I wanna get rid of so much stuff so I can have this, so I can reclaim this space. I wanna be able to use this space for other things. Currently, it is being completely absorbed by this bookshelf of books that I'm not even reading anymore. I've read them all, they've served their purpose. Now there's this huge bookshelf of books that I don't read anymore. Instead, I could actually give those books away to some of my friends and family and people who I know would actually read them, get value from them, and then I could reclaim that space. So have a goal in mind as to what you want to accomplish whenever you're going through this decluttering process. Number two, come up with a sorting system. So once you have that goal in mind, now you come up with a sorting system. Because you can't just say, I'm going to either throw this away or I'm going to keep it, because it could be something that could bring value to somebody else's life, like the books I mentioned earlier. So have a sorting system in mind. So you can have three different boxes. This one's to donate. This one's to absolutely just get rid of because it's junk now. And this one, let's call it a maybe box. Let's call it a maybe box. And I'll get to the maybe box here in a minute. But you can have these three different boxes as a sorting system. Or you could come up with your own, whatever works for you. This three box system, that's what worked for me. So I had three boxes. I had one to where I knew I was going to just junk it. It's junk, it's useless, it's not gonna do anybody any good. Let's throw it away. If I can recycle it, I'll recycle it. But that's the stuff to just get rid of. Box number two, that's the stuff to donate. That's the stuff like books or clothing items that are still in really good condition that I just know I'm not gonna wear anymore. Things that I can give to Goodwill or the local Salvation Army or even friends and family who might find value from my books. So have that second box, things that you can actually donate, repurpose and give to somebody to add value to them as well. The third box, this is where you put those items where you don't know if you wanna keep it or not yet. You don't know if it'll add value to you. This box is where you put those things that you're kind of iffy on getting rid of because maybe you might need that in the future. Who knows? Hey, that's fine. Put it in that box. What I did with my clothing items is I actually had a box and I took all the clothing items out of my closet, out of my dressers that I didn't wear, that I never wore. I hadn't worn them in the past year. And I thought to myself, well, what if there's a day where I decide, hey, I really wish I had that shirt so I could wear it to this event. Man, I really wish I had those pants still. Oh, they look so good on me, but I just never wore them. Why did I never wear them? So what I ended up doing is I put them in this third box. And once they were in that box, I closed the box, I sealed the box, and then I wrote the date on that box. And if in a year's time or six months or three months, whatever time period you feel is appropriate, if after that time period, you haven't gotten into that box and pulled out any of those clothing items, donate them. They're gone. Just declutter. Get that out of your house and out of your life. You're not using them, you don't need them. You haven't opened the box in three, six, nine months, a year's time. Donate it. And it's already boxed up. You don't even have to go through and try to rebox everything. It's already boxed up. Take it down to the donation center, get rid of it, declutter. Again, we talked about those benefits as to why you should declutter. It's a wonderful process and you'll feel so much better about it afterwards, especially knowing that you're adding value to other people. These are clothing items that people that are in real need could use. So box those things up, box up those maybe items, put the date on them, put them out in the garage or in the attic or wherever your storage space is temporarily, not permanently, temporarily, put them out in that storage space wait for that time period to elapse and then in that three month to a year period take them down to the donation center and donate them number three start with the easy items first for me the easiest items to start with were my clothing items so I got rid of my clothing items first I really downsized what I wore to something that really suit my lifestyle so I've got on this really comfortable button-up t-shirt right here this is my casual clothing Pretty much the only casual clothing that I have. Everything else is button-up shirts. I got three pairs of blue jeans, five pairs of slacks. I've got five button-up shirts and a couple of pairs of shoes for different occasions. Running shoes, dress shoes, 
and more casual shoes for out and about. So I really downsized my wardrobe really heavily in that regard. So it was easy for me to start in that area. For some people, starting with clothing might be a difficult place to start. Find what's easy for you to go through first. Don't start with sentimental items or you'll never get started because you're gonna look at those sentimental items and you're gonna think, wow, I remember that time whenever, insert sentimental memory here. So don't start with sentimental items. Those come last. Speaking of sentimental items, I actually had some for an example to go over with you and how I would treat them moving forward in the decluttering process. Okay, so I mentioned earlier that I went through and I found some old boxes with some of my military uniforms and swag that I got over the years in it. I actually ended up decluttering a lot of that. I got rid of a lot of that. It had a lot of books and stuff from, you know, my notebooks from where I took notes and stuff. Uh, got rid of all of that, trashed that. But the uniforms, I got some of those vacuum seal packs, put my uniforms in them, vacuum sealed them, and then I got a trunk that I put all of my uniforms in. It's an airtight trunk. I put all my uniforms in it. I put all my awards and things, that my medals and whatnot that I accumulated over my service. Put those in the trunk as well, sealed it up. The reason I didn't just outright get rid of all of that is because that is sentimental to me. And I want to leave that behind for my kids and my grandkids one day to look back and look at what their grandfather and their dad had done in his life. So I didn't get rid of that, but I did actually find a place to intentionally store it. A couple of things that I decided not to put in that box, my dress blue white cover. I love this thing. I actually have this hanging up and I have it hanging up next to my discharge papers. Yeah, I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> so those are two sentimental items that I actually have hanging up. I have these on display. So they're not clutter to me. They're items that I can be proud of and that I have on display. So like I said, I framed this and I have this hanging right next to it on the wall. But it's something that I'm proud of that I enjoy not only letting other people see, but I also enjoy looking at that myself. So if I'm ever down on myself, I can look on my wall, I can see this, and I can know that I did something of value. And that ultimately cheers me up. Another couple of sentimental items that we have in the house that we have on display is the tiara that my wife wore on our wedding day as well as a centerpiece from the tables at the reception of our wedding. Now these are really sentimental items that we are definitely not getting rid of. The other things, the other centerpieces and whatnot, we actually did get rid of, but we kept these. This absolutely is a sentimental part of her dress that she wore and this we kept because well it's pretty it's not big it's not bulky and it means a lot to her it really means a lot to her so that's why we ended up keeping this now the last sentimental item example that I have need I say more well of course I need to say more I can't just hold up a ball of tarantula and leave it at that right yeah, I guess I could and you'd just be wondering what it's all about so that was actually a collector's item that my wife's grandfather had and when he passed that went to my wife so that is a sentimental item to her in a sense that it belonged to her uh, late grandfather but it's also something that we've been considering and not having it in the house anymore because it is, it's taking up space, it's not something that we find value in. It's great that it was a sentimental item that belonged to her grandfather, but she has the memories with him. This wasn't one of the memories that she had with him. She really had no connection to this item in particular. So we're really considering that being one of the next things that we kind of rehome. So that's one of the reasons why you need to wait and save the sentimental items for last. They can be very tricky and really difficult to get rid of and it'll really throw off any momentum that you might have in decluttering your home if you start with the sentimental items and find that you have trouble getting rid of any of those. So don't start with the sentimental items. Have a plan, have a sorting system, and then start with something easy and build on the momentum from that going forward. 
All right, guys, I wanted to give you just one piece of advice, one word of warning before you get started. Don't declutter someone else's stuff for them. That's for them. Declutter your own stuff. I am not going to make the decision to declutter this out the door. That's not my decision to make. That's my wife's decision. When she's ready, if she wants to, she can decide if she wants to rehome this or not. That's not my decision to make. Just like she's not going to throw out my dress blue cover. That's not happening. So don't declutter somebody else's stuff. That is just a fight waiting to happen. Declutter your own stuff, reap the benefits of clarity of mind, less stress, and more room to just enjoy your space. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you. I hope to see you all in the next video. Live better, be better. Actually, no. And I'm gonna be going over three reasons why you should declutter your home, as well as giving you three reasons 